How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, a.k.a. Slammerella. Today, we have the review to do for James McCohen's solo project. That being the self-titled cassette tape he sent me in the very generous package a couple days ago. And, yeah, so this is some, basically some raw black metal with death metal elements and some odd thrash metal elements here and there but was presented as a kind of black metal project for the most part this was released on april 3rd 2020 so mid last year however this is about 55 minutes of 24 tracks that were compiled into this album that he worked on over the last seven years here and there so since probably roughly 2014. Uh, in the meantime, he's also been in a couple other black metal related projects, one being Necromage with the Breaking the Twilight album that was released in 2014, and a project that he did with a couple of peers of his called Witch Breath, which had a self-titled release in 2017. So there's a couple of black metal related releases by James McCohen. James is based out of Oregon, USA, Mount Angel, which is a very interesting name for a town or city for sure. And once again, uh, there are about 24 tracks on this compilation release. So I definitely had a lot to go over and think about. So the vocals were about low to mid-level in the mix, depending on what track. There's a lot of reverb on some vocals, some distortion on others. A lot of echo going on here and there as well so he was definitely experimenting with different sounds on the the vocals they were performed pretty well for the most part throughout the album and for each style that was presented speaking of style there was a variety of different elements going on with the vocals there's some deep growls there's some like haunting whispers there's also some kind of demonic high vocals some echoey bellows and some airy black metal screams as well as some midnight style kind of raspy shouted vocals on the last couple of tracks. As for the guitars, they are mostly mid-level in the mix as well, depending on what track. They were mostly done good throughout the album, depending on what style was being presented. You had mid-paced thrash riffs, slow haunting atmospheric chords, tremolos, some solos, and the occasional long drawn out doom riff, but they were used sparingly. As for the bass, I couldn't really pick it out for the most part, so I can't really say much about the bass. If it's there, it was mixed really lowly or it was just kind of blended in with the lo-fi mix. So we're just going to kind of move on with the drums. So the drums were also mid-level in the mix, depending on what song it was. It was a little bit lower, a little bit higher. Although I felt they were performed and programmed well, and they complemented the riffs, I think the drums, depending on what track it was, were either programmed or done live on an acoustic kit. The sound was pretty good for the most part. Uh, there were some pounding bass drums, some double kicks. It had a solid snare and blast beats going on throughout. It also had some cool cymbal work and some decent fills. All right, so before we move on to my favorite tracks, I'm going to say that there were about 15 tracks that were pretty good in my opinion and definitely stood out. But there was also about nine tracks that seemed like a bit of filler or maybe too low fire demo quality so out of the 15 or so tracks that i enjoyed these are my favorite three so one of my favorite tracks on this was shine the light of satan it just had this intense grimy main riff had some mean atmosphere and some very ethereal vocals so yeah number seven shine the light of satan was really really good and then we moved on to number 21 which is I Am Pure Evil. Very in-your-face title of a track. Had a really great thrash riff near the beginning. The guitar tone for this song was on point, and it also had some excellent solos and great vocal delivery. And the third track on here that I liked the most was Spawn of Satan. This is what James refers to as his midnight song, and it definitely did have that black and roll sleaze punk style to it. 
and there was some pretty decent solos in this one as well and it was just a, a venomous good time i think it just barely hit the one minute 30 second mark too it's a very quick song same with i am pure evil also a very quick short song on a side note, I also really enjoyed the track Zombie Wound. However, I would love to hear a little bit more polished version of this as it did have a very recorded off of an old cassette feel that was perhaps maybe a little too lo-fi or underproduced. So I would love to hear a more polished, more hi-fi version of that song in the future, if ever given the chance, because it did seem like it was really good. It was full of high energy. It was just kind of brought down a bit by the production value, though, that's all. So my overall thoughts for this album was that it started out with a dark, groovy death metal track, followed by some slight filler and another chuggy, blackened death metal bulldozer of a song. And I'd say this was a mostly haunting, heavy, and hellish compilation. It includes the odd, unfavorable extra track here and there. And I'd say if you did trim the fat, you'd have a pretty enjoyable 15-track album, however, with black metal, death metal, and pounding aggression, with the fair share of eerie melody and darkness. So, uh, with that being said, here are the 15 main tracks that I found the most enjoyable. And here are the nine tracks that I feel could probably be trimmed off of this album as they don't really add any extra oomph to it and seem a little bit like maybe filler or b-sides. All right, so with that out of the way, here are some weaknesses or improvements that I feel could be done with the album. Once again, some of the production quality issues could be fixed a bit better, uh, a little bit too lo-fi for me. Some of the volume in some of the mixes could be better, i.e. the vocals in Shine the Light of Satan could have been a little higher, even though that is one of my favorite tracks. Another thing that could be looked at in the future is maybe the inconsistency of the tracks themselves being in the quality or the style of the tracks. And again, there just seemed like there is about eight or nine tracks that are kind of filler-ish or have the, like a b-side feel to them that don't really add anything to the album and just kind of detracts from the rest of the really good songs. So all in all I thought this was a really adventurous experimental cool dark album to listen to and even with some of the quality of the production and some of the odd kind of style choices for some of the songs in there. I'm still going to give this a solid 7 out of 10. Definitely recommend you go check out James McCohen's self-titled album. We're talking about James McCohen's self-titled 24-track compilation album that was released April 3rd, 2020. Had a pretty fun time going over all the tracks on this and kind of delving in to all of the creations that he's made over the years that led to the creation of this album. Thanks again, James, for sending this to me, as well as the extra stuff in that bonus giant package that we unbox here on this channel. Still enjoying a lot of the things on there, still listening to some of the punk projects going on there. And I highly recommend you guys check it out. Also check out his Necromage, Breaking the Twilight album, and the black metal album he did with his friends in Witch Breath from 2017. So yeah, that's it for my review of this. I'm Jesse Morgan, and I would buy this album. Cheers. For glory, for the Rebel Alliance, Slammerella out.